Hello, and welcome to Preparing for a Data Engineering Interview with me, Ben Rogeshan. Today, we're going to be focusing on a few key areas that you as a data engineer need to be ready for if you're going into a data engineering interview. In particular, we're going to focus on uh, ETLs and data warehouse design, SQL and coding, uh, big data, as well as behavioral uh, questions. The focus of this video will be mostly to give you some high-level tips, as well as you know where you can go for more resources, um, I'll connect a few links below as far as like some guides and that can really help you uh, as depending on how this video goes, you know, I might make a few more where I go a little more into detail on these specific tips. Uh, so do let me know uh, your thoughts and where you might have more questions. Now let's first answer this first question, which is why am I making this video? Uh, recently, I read an article where where interviewquery.com basically found that uh, data science interviews were actually decreasing over time. Uh, whereas data engineering interviews were increasing. Yeah, uh, the link will be below if you would like to read more about this research that they did. Um, but in 2020, they essentially saw a 40% increase in the number of interviews that were done that were data engineering. So that brings the question, you know, what is actually going on in a data engineering interview? I think there's a lot of coverage around data science, but I've definitely seen uh, a lot of questions, you know, as far as becoming a data engineer, uh, what skills do you need, et cetera. So I think this should lean right into that. So let's first focus on data warehouses and ETL design. And here, my first tip usually is think about actual products in real life and actual processes, and then sit down and design data warehouses for that. So when you're design, doing data warehouse designs, you know, think about like a college class management system. What, what pieces are involved in that, right? Like what's the fact table? What are the, the dimension tables? What are the metrics that you might have to, to answer questions about, because um, generally, I'll go through this, through this shortly, but generally, you'll design a data warehouse, and then after designing it, they'll ask you to query that data warehouse you've designed with some analytical uh, queries. Uh, similarly, you can think about something like DoorDash, you know, what, what's the fact table for DoorDash, right? Like you've got orders, then you've got drivers, you've got customers, there, there's a lot of different angles, right? Locations, and it can get very complex. So making sure you try to deal with a lot of those complexities from as many possible options, because Often there will be things that intersect. For example, DoorDash is probably very similar in some ways to Uber. Um, you just add that extra layer um, as far as, you know, now on top of that, you're doing uh, restaurants, getting in the food and the menu that you're ordering from. But you also have to deal with complex issues like location um, and things like that that could be a little more complex and like trip. And so, so you've already kind of defined that. So that's why I say like, think about things that you do every day and, and create data warehouses around that. And most importantly, do it with a timer, right? Uh, assume that you're gonna be doing an hour long interview and the data warehouse design section, probably you only have probably about 20 or 30 minutes to do it. Uh, and then they'll wanna go into more SQL questions. So you wanna make sure you can do a data warehouse design within that time. So as far as like kind of the data warehouse interview flow, uh, that the question and kind of the process that I'd recommend, generally I would recommend you first outlining the high level entities, right? Like I kind of brought that up uh, if you're doing like DoorDash, you've got things like the restaurants, the menus, um, the orders themselves, the customers, the, the drivers, you've got a lot of complex things in there. Like, okay, maybe you just do customers and drivers as users. Uh, then how do you notify that, you know, someone's a driver, you also have cars. Um, and there are a lot of complex uh, components in there that you'll need to consider. And so just draw those out, maybe do a few fields as well, but just kind of draw those out and, and kind of ask the, the, the interviewer. They might provide some information if you're like on the right track. You know, do these entities sound right? Um, do you think I'm missing anything? They may or may not provide it, but you know, I don't think it hurts to ask. Uh, from there, you know, do a quick diagram. You often just quickly diagram, you know, your data warehouse, put some fields in there, et cetera. Um, at this point, hopefully if you have a decent interviewer, they might catch you on a few issues that you have, especially if you're really close. Um, if you're very far off, they probably won't help you that much. Um, or they're probably going to ask you to, you know, do a lot of re remodeling. But if you're very pretty close, I think they should at least guide you um, to try to have the right design. Because in the next section, what they'll usually do uh, is then ask you to query that data warehouse you've designed. And so if you've got problems in it, uh, it's going to be impossible to ask the queries that they have. Because generally those queries are probably canned. You know, they're not, they don't make those queries up on the fly. You can imagine how difficult that would be if you were an interviewer. Um, so they're probably hoping to ask you a few questions. And so that's kind of the general flow. And I've, I've had this happen at least three or four times with three or four different interviews. You know, it's a very consistent flow and at different companies. Um, you know, so, so if you're doing a data warehouse design, this is pretty consistent. 
And so that's kind of the data warehouse design portion. And, and if you'd like, again, I can make a video kind of walking through this whole process uh, more on like a specific example level, like, like we could do Costco or a, a, class, a class management system example. Okay, now what about ETL design? So I'm not gonna go again too much into drilling into every little bit, but here I just want you to think about specific things. So when you're doing ETL designs, I, I often find interviewers look for things like, um, what are you doing for logging, you know? Um, and maybe you can just assume you're using Airflow, but especially if you're doing something more custom, you might use, uh, you might have to build your own logging. Similar thing goes for dependency management. You might be using a library that does this, but you might not, and you might have to do something around that. Um, data QA, you know, do you have a process for data QA? That can be another layer. And then most importantly, I think the different layers um, of that data. So you, you're gonna have to talk through, you know, raw, how are you scraping that data? Uh, what's your plan? Is it going to CSV? Where's it getting stored? Uh, from there, staging, what, and what do you think happens in staging, right? Like you're deduplicating, are you QAing? Are you running business logic? Um, and then, you know, prod and then analytical layers. So maybe what happens in prod? What do you think happens in the analytical layers? Are you joining all these tables together? Um, so just think through that process. Again, um, I'm happy to kind of go through a more detailed version of this, but I think in this case, uh, with ETL design, it's more about thinking through the different components, high level, and just talking through them. You probably won't have to code that much at all, most likely. Don't, don't quote me on that. It will be mostly focused on really just, you know, ensuring that you have the understanding of those different high level components. All right, so next, um, SQL and coding interviews. So these will be very similar, at least coding wise to probably a programmer's uh, interview questions. They might be a little less difficult or they might be focused more operationally. Um, but regardless, I would say go on Hacker Rank, go on Leak Code, practice these problems that they have, practice few, you know, practice 10, practice 20, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Also with SQL, I think it's very helpful to just write a few problems um, and think some through yourself. Like I'm pretty sure most of us have answered enough questions, you know, where you can think about, you know, if you're in the healthcare industry and you're trying to write some metrics or in transportation, how would you do that? What are the questions you would ask? Write them down. Again, you can design a database and then write some queries against it. I think it's great practice both for, again, the data warehouse design, but also SQL, right? If you're already thinking ahead of, of what possible questions could happen, uh, I think it just makes you even more ready. And I, I picked this up from one of my uh, classmates in college who used to do that for exams. He wouldn't just practice from the book. He would try to uh, almost predict what the professor would be asking. And then he would practice those problems as well. And, you know, he did really well in a lot of the exams, I think, because of it. Also, finally, um, I kind of went over this in the coding. You know, yes, you have algorithm and operational problems. So do be ready for both. But also, don't be afraid to start over. Um, I, I, and I think also people that I've interviewed, have this bad tendency of just keep of co constantly writing and adding more code to a problem. And there's a certain point where you might have to start over, right? Um, if you're just constantly adding way too many conditionals and it's way too complex and the logic is very hairy, um, one, it doesn't look good, right? Like it never looks good when you have six, seven, eight, nine if statements and they're crazy nested. Um, it, it, even if you get the right answer, it, it might not look good uh, to the interviewer. So, so be careful and consider restarting if you have to. Um, it's hard, but sometimes it's better than just giving it the wrong answer or an answer that's so brute forced that it makes it look like your coding is generally very sloppy. Um, next, I'm going to actually show you some questions from SQL that I found on Glassdoor. So you can kind of see and get a general idea of what kind of interview questions people might ask. So for example, they have one where it's like the marketing team wants to run a campaign to bring back subscribers who are no longer active, write a query to pull all the subscribers who are no longer active. And that's probably a very simple query, but you'll probably notice that as you go on, you start seeing uh, even more complex questions. So, so just be ready for that. And then feel free again, you can look these questions up. They're out there, sadly. They're out there. Um, and, and it just gives you an understanding of what you might be asked. So just be ready. Um, for whatever questions might come. All right, so this is one area that I haven't, I've, I've been asked occasionally, you know, you'll always generally have ETL and warehouse design questions. You'll generally have SQL, sometimes Python. Actually, Python was a little more hit or miss when I was interviewing, but definitely always SQL. Um, and big data questions were kind of, again, I think I was asked when I was doing my original interviews, probably by two different uh, companies, some more big data questions. So just be ready to talk through these. So for example, batch versus streaming, it's not necessarily that batch and streaming is big data, but I think it is, it can be start, it starts flowing into that big data concept. So why would you use batch versus streaming? What are the benefits? What are the, the pros and cons? Think that through. 
Um, Similarly, distributed computing. Uh, there's so many ways that I think there are a lot of there are a few there are a few different ways that that's been implemented, or at least similar concepts have been implemented for distributed computing. So just be ready to talk about that. You know, uh, they might ask you about MPP um, with Redshift or or how Hadoop set up. Uh, generally, these are very high level questions. Like they're they're not going to hopefully ask you to write a MapReduce job uh, at your interview, but they'll just want you to understand the underlying architecture uh, and what occurs kind of underneath everything. So again, this is generally, generally don't quote me, more high level. And I, I think finally is ETL improvement and for, and for performance. Because if you've worked in, as a data engineer long enough, uh, generally I think probably two or three years, you've probably done some sort of ETL improvement or performance. And generally what I think this means personally is they want to see how you found the issue so that you found it efficiently, right? Because oftentimes uh, you can kind of brute force finding performance issues, but it's often very ineffective and it could take days. But if you're very good at you know, debugging and making sure you have the right logging in place, it'll be very quick. So you know, talk about that as well as talk about your solution. You know, How did you actually solve this problem? Um, so just be ready with an example of, of some way you've improved your ETL performance. Um, in the past, because especially with big data growing bigger, people need to kind of know that you're able not just to build an ETL, but you're able to take one that already exists and improve its overall performance. Okay, so finally, behavioral questions or behavior questions, however you want to call it. Uh, generally, the one common denominator I found here is ownership. Almost every, especially big tech company I've interviewed for, wants to see ownership. They want to see that you take projects, take the lead, drive things home, um, and, and do more than just code. Oftentimes I find, especially for big tech again, they are really good at hiring very smart people, technically speaking. Uh, but the thing that tends to differentiate these people is you know, their ability to own projects, drive projects, et cetera. Similarly, again, tech people and, and me being one of them as well, we often focus on the tech and not the results. So um, I remember my first interview at Amazon, <laughs> uh, they were asking me for specific metrics, like, you know, how much did that project, uh, you know, improve time and, and all these various things. And I had nothing. Um, I didn't know that that was gonna be a question. Um, you know, I was talking more about the tech that I was working with. And, um, you know, oftentimes companies don't care, especially big tech, hopefully don't care as much about the tech that you're working with and care more about the results that you were driving. So, you know, being more results, results driven, I think is important when you do behavior. Um, similarly, having that driven curiosity. So they want, I think a lot of people want to see that spark or that curiosity to do more than just, you know, build what you're told. Um, something, you know, they, they want to, I think, see someone that's willing to dig into details, someone that's willing to ask why are they doing things um, and these various things that are more than just, again, being an engineer. So I, 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 that's why I kind of point this out. I think a lot of us, me, myself included, you know, tend to focus again on the tech because that's what we find cool. And uh, if you want to stand out, you know, having that ability to have that driven curiosity to really dig into details, I think is valuable. Finally, the last tip, because I've, I've covered three things, but honestly, every company has their own principles and missions and everything like that. So go look that up. Uh, you know, Amazon used to, I think, only have seven or 11, and now they've, I think they have more. Um, but you can Google this stuff, you know, Google this and similar to the SQL questions, write down what you think they might ask you. Uh, generally, these are questions about the work that you've done. You know, how do you take ownership? You know, what project were you most proud of? Things like that, that are very, um, seem very generic. But when they ask you about, you know, what project you're most proud of, they're really trying to figure out, you know, what did you do in that project? Why were you proud of it? You know, th things that actually start pointing to some of these other uh, principles. So just be aware of that. All right. And so with that, I've covered kind of the few areas I want to cover for this video. If you have other like specific questions on data engineering interview, please feel free to ask. Um, I'm going to maybe make some more depending on what you say and depending on how well this video does. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.